published 1808 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 30th of April 2018, updated 1058 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 1st of May 2018, The Man with the Green Sweater. An embrace for the law on his last home appearance. Whatever his failings, whatever his foibles, he's been a power of good for the game of football, those were the words of BBC commentator Barry Davis on May 1, 1993 as Brian Clough stopped to hug a policewoman after emerging from the tunnel for his last ever match as Nottingham Forest manager at the city ground. Fans rose to the feet as Clough, who pulled his trademark green umbro jumper over a red polo shirt, turned right to start his walk down the touchline for the final time, surrounded by photographers. There were more embraces for the policemen trying to hold them back. Clough was 58 then but looks 10 years older, his face reddened after years of heavy drinking. Sheffield United were the opponents for Clough's 993rd of 994 matches in charge of Forrest, his very final outing was away to Ipswich a week later. It drew to an end his incredible 18-year spell as one of the most successful managers in British football history. It was a day of tears and sorrow, as well as love and celebration. A nightmare ending, yet a fan's farewell that most managers can only dream of. Brian Clough emerges from the tunnel for his final home game as Nottingham Forest manager on May 1, 1993. Clough pulls on his trademark green jumper for the final time as he strides down the touchline before kick-off. Clough hugs a policewoman as he walks out of the tunnel. Clough was the man who propelled Forest to the highest peak during a dazzling period that revived a reputation batted by his infamous 44-day spell with Leeds. This was their incredible ascent, 1975 appointed manager at Forest, then in the second division 1977 wins promotion by finishing third 1978 Division 1 champions 1979 European Cup champions 1980 European Cup champions again, that outrageous sequence would be considered an astonishing burst of success for any club, let alone this red corner of the East Midlands. Fast forward to the grey first day of May 1993 and this was a man whose magic had finally worn off. Forrest slid back down to the second tier of English football in the Premiership's inaugural season. They slipped out of the top flight with a whimper, losing 2-0 to Sheffield United on the penultimate weekend. Yet, this day was about much, much more than the result. This was the afternoon Clough, the man who led Forrest from 1975 to 1993, waved goodbye to the people who had clung on for every twist and turn of an unprecedented, unpredictable journey. The preceding weeks had been dominated by a debate over the nature of his departure, which bears similarity with Arsene Wenger's exit from Arsenal. Was Clough really retiring or was he being pushed out? It was a terribly awkward situation for those involved, culminating in this final home match. Nigel Clough, then a 27-year-old Forest forward, was repeatedly pushed on his father's exit and health by Davis in a fascinating post-match interview. Clough, centre in the green jumper, looks on in horror from the dugout with fans sharing his pain above him as he watches his Nottingham Forest team get relegated from the Premiership. Nigel Clough was pushed by Barry Davis on his father's health in Anne. Interview in the tunnel Forrest finished bottom in the 1992-93 Premiership season Davies, is his health good? He doesn't seem to be a well man, it has to be said, Clough, I think age has caught up with him, Davies, cutting in, he's only 58, Nigel. It's not that old, is it, Clough, it is for me. Forty years in this business has taken its toll and over the past 18 months it's caught up quite rapidly, Davies, one or two of us are quite worried about him. Are you, Clough? Not really, as long as he fills his time in Welland as a bit of gardening and so on, a week earlier and just a month after Clough SNR had been awarded the freedom of the city, he had announced he was retiring amid a backdrop of claims and counterclaims over whether his drinking was discrediting the club. On the same day, Forrest suspended director Chris Wood in a midi claims he ran a dirty tricks campaign and had been offering stories of Clough's alleged drinking to newspapers. Wooten denied this but insisted Clough's exit vindicated him. Brian Clough has been the best possible manager for Nottingham Forest for many years, he said, but because of his health, I thought it best for the club and Brian himself for him to consider his position. There has been disquiet among the board for some time. Clough's lawyers threatened to sue. Forest's chairman Fred Reacher denied it was true and that the manager retained the board's support. 
It was a controversial climax to a chaotic campaign. The handling of transfers in the summer of 1992 was a mess. England defender A. Walker was sold to Sam Doria for £1.5 million and soon the man who was identified to replace him, the homegrown Darren Wassell, followed him out of the door after a bust-up with his manager Clough. Teddy Sheringham, who scored the first ever televised Premier League goal for Forest against Liverpool in August, was sold just a week later to Tottenham for £2.1 million. Add to this a cluster of distracting incidents, a young Roy Keane being arrested over an incident at a party, released without charge, and later fined £5,000 after a separate barroom incident in Jersey while on a club tour, a shareholder vote of no confidence in the board and Clough himself accused of delivering a two-fingered gesture to Forest fans, and you can appreciate just how tumultuous this season was building up to his departure. Before airing the Nottingham Forest v Sheffield United highlights, BBC's Match of the Day host Day Lynham diverted viewers to interviews with Forest fans outside the ground before the match. It gave a glimpse of an alien world compared to the Wenger Out campaigns of today. Clough salutes the fans after returning to the pitch after they had been relegated following the 2-0 defeat by Sheffield United. The departing Clough shakes hands with a Sheffield United fan as he's given a standing ovation at the city ground. Nottingham Forest, Andy Marriott, Brian Laws, Brett Williams, Steve Chettle, Carl Tyler, Kingsley Black, Nigel Clough, Scott Gemmel, Roy Keane, Ian Wone, Robert Rosario, Sheffield United, Alan Kelly, Carl Bradshaw, Paul Beasley, John Pemberton, Brian Gale, Charlie Hartfield, Glyn Hodges, Paul Rogers, Mish Ward, Dane Whitehouse, Brian Dean Gulls, Hodges, 30, Gale, 73, Referee, Paul Dirk in attendance, 26,752, I think it's disgraceful, said a man flipping burgers in his van parked outside the city ground. It's the first bad season we've had in five or six years and suddenly everyone is calling for Clough to be resigning. I think we should stick with him, give the man a chance and hope they do well next year. Sound bites from other sympathetic supporters included, One bad season doesn't make him a bad manager, he's the best thing that ever happened to Nottingham, and a bomb use, I don't know what to do without him really. A lady in a pointed forest hat was holding back tears as she said, I've just taken him some flowers but they wouldn't let me give them to him because he's in the bath. So I said I could come in and scrub his back. Police had advised Forest players, eventually beaten by goals from Glyn Hodges and Brian Gale, that they should hurry off the playing field at the full-time whistle to avoid being caught up in a pitch invasion. Keane was one who ran off down the tunnel, with Clough already making his way down for what he thought would be the final time. Son Nigel, however, ignored the advice and remained on the pitch to applaud the supporters, police said before the game to get in as quickly as you can, he later told Davies. But I think on a day like this, when there's been absolutely tremendous support all season, it's only right that we should stay out and give a small gesture of our thanks back out in the stadium. Fans refused to leave until Clough returned for one last goodbye at the city ground. One banner simply read, Brian Clough is a football genius, with his green sweater still on and a young fan trying to drape a forest flag around his shoulders, Clough, again flanked by photographers, marched over to the executive stand, later to be renamed after Clough, where his name was being chanted. There were thumbs up as he was engulfed by hundreds of supporters on the pitch. This would be his final farewell to the adoring masses. The end of 18 years on one of football's most compelling journeys. Surrounded by fans and police, Clough waves goodbye to the Forest supporters on the pitch at the city ground. Clough is mobbed by Nottingham Forest fans as he makes his way off the pitch at the city ground for the final time Brian Clough was given. A huge send-off by the home fans, despite defeat confirming the relegation from the Premiership after he finally departed for the final time, Clough spoke to Davies in front of the white brick wall inside Forest Tunnel, a world away from today's kaleidoscope advertisement boards. Asked what he was going to do next, Clough paused for thought before telling Davies, I'm going to spend boring minutes talking to people like you, that's what I'm going to do, no, I'm not. I'm going to walk around and look after my her children. I might even come to a football match. Actually, he then politely added, Barry, could you excuse me? Thank you for asking me to be interviewed. I'll go back to my wife Barbara and my her children. It's been a pleasure knowing you, sir, replied Davies.
Enjoy your retirement, the pair, one a titan of football management, the other a master of football commentary, then shared a tender embrace. Clough was holding back the tears, but the years had finally caught up with him. Clough shares a hug with BBC interviewer Barry Davis after his final home match as Nottingham Forest manager How the Daily Mail reported Clough's final game in the edition on Monday, May 3, 1993.